AI and Society, an Alliance University Confest, media partner, CNBC TV18. Alliance University's AI and Society Confest, a pioneer initiative in the higher education landscape, explored the multifaceted impact of AI across diverse disciplines. I now declare the AI and Society Alliance Confest 2024 as open. While artificial intelligence remains unfamiliar territory for many, it's already revolutionizing various aspects of life. AI is reshaping societies worldwide. The exhibition concludes uh, a three-day conference which started at the campus of Alliance University. Um, the conference itself investigates the way AI is now part of our society and the artworks that are included here in the exhibition at the Bangalore International Centre at BIC, as most Bangaloreans refer to it, all investigate the way AI functions. They invite people to play with the artworks to interact with them, to tease them, to see how, what AI actually does. And I think that's a very crucial question for today's society. We all live with AI one way or the other, but we often have no idea how it operates. So first of all, let me congratulate Alliance University for organizing such a grand conference on this very crucial topic. But what is interesting is the, the people who are involved in organizing, I could see just for a glance, could understand, they are from social sciences, not just the engineers, you know, that's the, that's the beauty of it. The first, you know, when, you got, when, the, when I just walked into this institute, I felt, you know, you have created a marvelous place next to a small village called Anekal. So it's very remarkable, happy to see such a technology usage. This is a very unique, you know, conference plus festival of what? Artificial intelligence. In a one-on-one -on -one discussion, Dr. T.G. Sitaram explored the future of education with Alliance University's Pro-Chancellor Abheji Chebi. How about ethical considerations when policies have to be drafted when you sort of bring AI in education? It's all because AI has actually transformed yourself to think in seconds. So everybody wants to be in the front. So, you know, Harry, they put it up with a lot of mistakes. So it's a mistake only. I don't think we should be worried about it. If they themselves would have thought and properly tested it, that would not have come out. That would not have come out. So, so nothing to really worry. It's all right. I think they were apologized, moved ahead. So life is like that. So we have to, we'll make mistakes. So we need to learn from the mistakes. Alliance University leverages AI to shape the future of education, aligning with global trends. The Confest showcases an array of cutting-edge courses available to students, demonstrating their commitment to staying correct. Alliance uh, School of Liberal Arts particularly is coming up with the AI in the Humanities Center for Excellence, which is going to be a path-breaking way of, you know, sort of incorporating and systematizing these processes through research works, through teaching learning, through introducing new kinds of courses, through sort of facilitating further conversations both in person and online in the coming future. By embracing the fusion of AI and art, Alliance University fosters creativity and innovation across all disciplines, offering newcomers a unique and welcoming entry point to the art world. We work together as a, uh, as a team uh, of, of sort of engaged and enthusiastic faculty members to make this happen. But we didn't want to just stop there. We also wanted this to be an opportunity for us to bring active participating artists into the fold, right? Not just academics thinking and talking, but also artworks which have a less discursive but a more immediate interaction with what AI means for the world. As we all know, usually a new emergent technology entails certain disruptive changes to society and it's usually the artists who come to terms with that in a way that's understandable, uh, reconcilable in the, let's say, minds and hearts of a public, uh, a general public. And in that fashion, at the BIC, we've organized an, uh, an AI and art exhibition where the most cutting edge of uh, Indian art, uh, the sort of uh, biggest known names in sort of like the avant-garde of Indian art are here. Uh, you know, Tara Kelton, for instance, uh, Hassan, uh, Har uh, Harish, 
uh, and Apu Pen, they're all here to basically display artworks that allow not, that basically not just are like paintings which are to be observed, but artworks in which one can actually engage. At the School of Liberal Arts, uh, we want always to have a constant conversation between art and technology, between science and history, between philosophy and uh, computing, stuff like these. Two, any two disciplines which you think otherwise would not connect, in, in the School of Liberal Arts, we try to bring them together. And that academic philosophy was in a way manifested as the driving, uh, you, or how should I say, the driving manifesto behind this art AI art exhibition and uh, this is only just the beginning uh, with a uh, with a up and coming design school which is doing really well with a media school and with a fresh new media lab at state of the media art media lab we actually not just plan to have external artists come and do installations we ourselves want to collaborate with them and do new experiment with new possibilities as far as installations are concerned. So the AI art exhibition is not the end, but the beginning of a journey. A panel exploring AI in warfare and its global ramifications, including both threats and opportunities, sparked intriguing insights. The discussion particularly highlighted the critical role of governance and its policy. AI is deeply driving warfare. Uh, so let's say, say, what are the Americans doing? In my view, the first problem before militaries is their reluctance to unlock data. So the data has to be unlocked. Also in the larger Indian sense, but specific to the military. I mean, it's commonly said that data is the new oil. And then people go on to say, but China is the new Saudi Arabia. Why not India? We are a larger population because our data is not being unlocked. Our data is not talking to data in the larger sense. DPI is wonderful. But DPI is, you know, giving some social delivery services. All that Vinayak was speaking about, clouds and all, that is not happening in that way. Now, specifically to the military, I'll tell you what happened in the Americans. I think it was uh, Ash Carter, the defense secretary, who was the first technologist. He was actually a scientist who was the defense secretary. He was the Raksha Mantri. So he understood the space very well. He kept telling the generals to unlock their data, and they just wouldn't. So he passed orders that, you know, every day before you go to your office, you will come to me and tell me how much of your data has been unlocked. And now that that data has begun to unlock, what have they done? See, the militaries have to have the humility to understand that these kind of technologies will not come from within. Dr. Hiroki Habuka, a renowned research professor at Kyoto University, shared valuable insights into AI international governance frameworks. We have to think about what are the goals of uh, governance. So there are two layers. The first layer is about human rights, democracy, rule of law, economic development, sustainability. All those fundamental values are values which we respected before uh, the AI age. And those fundamental values will not change uh, between the before and after AI. So, but uh, as I explained already, uh, since AI has a lot of uh, technical uh, unique aspects, uh, there are some uh, principles that should be especially uh, taken care when you develop or you use AI. And those principles are called AI principles or AI ethical principles. And that's where it's a very popular uh, agenda uh, since about uh, 2015 or 16. So there are a lot of, actually thousands of organizations that issues AI governance principles or AI principles or AI ethical principles. Like so. A thought-provoking conversation on AI and its impact on culture featuring Dr. Francesca Fernando took place during the event. Here are the key highlights. AI is not something that is separated from us. Yes, there is something that is uh, unique, original, as every one of you is. Because yes, we're all humans, but each of you is an individual human, is original, is unique, is, is, is an original creation. You are the artist of your own existence. And so is AI. And so AI is part of this human unfolding, this human creativity, but it's also its own thing. I believe there is consciousness in AI. I believe in artificial consciousness. Of course, it's not human consciousness. And so in the sense, I would like to think of AI not 
as the slave, we don't need slaves anymore. I think that this paradigm of the master and the slave is something that is old, that it doesn't do any favor to neither of the two aspects of, the, of this coin. And on the other side, thinking of AI as, as the new dominant species, is the prophecy that is almost what we are actualizing, is what we want almost to be. I, I believe in AI as an existential quest. We are together in this. It is part of this unfolding. It is a way of revealing, is ontological. At the Alliance School of Design and Creative Arts, a captivating exhibition showcased stunning design installations crafted by students and faculty alike. Infinite binaries, in particular, enthralled viewers with a tactical exploration of technology's boundless realm. As Bangalore cements its place as India's AI hub, Alliance University stands at the forefront driving technological innovation and shaping discussions on its societal impact. AI Confest, a redefining force in academia, fosters lively debates on cutting-edge ideas. Recognizing AI's transformative power, the School of Liberal Arts integrates it across disciplines. The university, positioned as a cultural nexus, sets a new standard with its AI art gallery, offering a glimpse into the future of museums. Don't miss the exclusive one-on-one -on -one chat with Abhay G. Chebi about the inspiration behind the festival after this break. AI and Society, an Alliance University Confest, media partner, CNBC TV18. Hi everyone, today at the Alliance University, the campus of course is buzzing with the AI and Society Confest, but I have taken the liberty of stealing somebody from the campus for a very special interaction. I know he's a very busy man today, but joining me now, Abhay Tebi, Pro-Chancellor of the University. I wanted to specially talk to you about uh, why the theme AI and uh, society as well, and uh, also a rhetoric question on how AI is reshaping higher education. Well, AI has taken the world by storm. Mm -hmm. Education is just one sector where its impact has happened. So to talk about education per se, I suppose AI or Gen AI now mm. has done so much more to this sector uh, what technology, plain technology could not do. Right. Artificial intelligence today can help a student learn better. Mm. But when I say that, every student can get personalized attention when it comes to his learning with respect to any course. A student might get stuck on one concept, but he may refrain himself from asking his professors yeah. or his uh, student friends. But AI is a machine which he can go back, ask again, repeatedly, nudge it, or the, or, or the <laughs> system nudges him so that he understands that and moves on. Mm -hmm. Not just in learning, yeah. His assessments also today have become so customized right. and personalized mm. that you can gauge a student's level of learning and then keep testing him to a stage where he can get perfect at a certain concept. Mm. But how easy or difficult is it for the faculty? I mean, with chat, GP, generative AI, how does the faculty keep up with so much? AI is not something to be feared about, mm -hmm. let me tell you that. In fact, here at Alliance University, we embrace it and it starts at the top. Now, going to faculty, faculty's workload is tremendously reduced with the use of AI. Mm -hmm. Today, a faculty can use grading tools to grade sophisticated, rather complicated, even subjective responses. Mm -hmm. That's A. Second, threaded discussions that happen on learning management platforms need not have a faculty intervention. Mm -hmm. Number three, the course content per se is getting built in rapid speed. So imagine a faculty and his core can get focused on what is really the necessity. Mm. That is conceptualizing oh, yes. and then putting it with the use of tools such as this. Mm. Now, when you take that to students, you know what those benefits are. Students get personalized learning, personalized assessments. And one aspect that we have experimented at Alliance University is immersive learning. Oh, wonderful. We've converted one of the classes with uh, virtual headgears in that. Imagine putting on a gear and walking on the streets of Russia, learning that language, buying vegetables. And that kind of a, a learning is stimulating students to retain what they have learned. Taking AI together when it, when it comes to learning, when it comes to teaching, you know, it is well known that employability is still a huge challenge. Uh, wondering about uh, how many of the students who are actually coming out are employable. The data is 
not very good. Education in today's time is taught with an isolation from the industry mm. where the, the products yeah. are absorbed. Our students go there ultimately. Yeah. Knowledge for the sake of knowledge is great, mm. but then you've got to be employable. Mm. If we work in isolation, this is never going to happen. Companies will have to put more money in retraining right. or rather detraining them <laughs> and training them again. Yeah. What here we do at Alliance University and most of the progressive universities, mm. what they do is they get involved the, the, the industry professionals mm. get involved mm. right at the board of studies mm. in the sense your curriculum is built with their help. Mm. Now, that is one aspect. Right. You have experts from technology, experts from law, from management who are plugged into these curriculum building uh, workshops mm -hmm. with our faculty. And some of them are professors of practice. Mm. So they teach. Now, g doing that is one part of the story. Right. But how do you take our students to be mentally ready to get into this uh, job market, yep. right? That's where shadowing comes into place. We've got a concept called mentorship, Mukda, mm -hmm. you must know this. Uh, all our students, especially now in the engineering as well as management, mm -hmm. are getting, uh, it's the ratio is one industry professional or a lawyer or a practitioner oh, uh, or, or a businessman to 10 students. Now this mentoring happens on weekends and people volunteer for this because they want the workforce to be ready and HR True. departments of companies are doing that intentionally and they're doing it wholeheartedly. And you know what it ultimately leads to? They shadow him or her and then they imbibe some of these uh. qualities of working in pressure, of understanding how important the concepts that they learn. Right. It's not for the sake of just fun, yeah. but they got to practice and then implement it. Hmm. So this now I'll bring the technology component. Hmm. Let me give you an example. A tech professional to be hmm. wants to know how much does it take for him to be an excellent coder. Hmm. Let's say he wants to get into a high code job. Now he is connected to a coder in the industry. Let's say talk about Python, for example. Hmm. He will guide him. Oh, He'll right at the campus? Yeah, well, that happens? online Online, or yeah. Offline. I mean, as part of yes, the uni. These or... sessions, uh -huh. these sessions where students get onto it and then they learn from these practitioners. Right. It's not a class. Mm. It's nothing that they have to fear or run away. Correct. But this is intentionally put into their curriculum mm. because aajkal ke bache, if it's not in the curriculum, <laughs> it's not there. So we try yeah. and do these kind of How things. How agile is the curriculum? Quite agile. Yeah. Quite agile. Well, agility is something in this VUCA yeah, world everyone yeah. has to have. True. Um, the curriculum once built hmm. goes on for about one semester, Mukta. Okay. Well, we are living in times which require yeah. this. You spoke of mindset mm -hmm. uh, and how important it is to have the right skill set along with the mindset. Mm -hmm. And in the industry uh, today, the best of leaders do not have that mindset when it comes to the new technologies, etc. Because there is fear. Mm -hmm. uh, there is uh, uh, that inherent fear that what is AI going to do? Well. Artificial intelligence is largely feared. Mm. Uh, in fact, the Confest uh, spoke about a lot of things. Mm. We had in AI enthusiasts, AI pessimists. This balance is very important because right. as we tread the path, yeah. as we build technologies, we also have to have a societal humanitarian angle Absolutely. to build it in a very, very democratic, clean, ethical way. Yes. Talking about fears that people have on AI, I think the fear of AI is all a buzz that needs to be, uh, how do I say, put to rest mm. immediately. Mm -hmm. Here at Alliance University, we embrace AI by telling students to use any model out there to complete their assignment. Mm -hmm. To use, Oh, how interesting. Yes, mm -hmm. but they have to substantiate that by a viva, for mm. an example. Right. They, they got to demonstrate that in some higher order skills like critical thinking, mm -hmm. reasoning, because you cannot give that to a GPT. Mm. It will only give you a, to a certain extent. So that way, we're trying to see the lower order skills can be outsourced mm. to, 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 to generative models. Smart by working. Smart uh, working. You know, yes. one of the nice lines quote that I like is, and it is true, AI today is making smart people smarter mm. and not so smart people dumber. Mm. If you embrace, adopt, you get ahead. What are you doing extra to sort of say from the very beginning that whatever you are doing should be with the mindset that it has to be conscious of? Well, truth be told, 
I wasn't a big advocate of sustainability until I truly realized what it can do to the society. Mm. So I went ahead. I'm part of the Alliance University is mm. in fact part of the SDG Accord. Uh -huh. It's a pact 2030 signed uh, with QS and few of the universities in India. Post that, Mukda, what I have done, at least I would, I'm, I'm happy that I brought that seriousness and we have established a center of excellence. Right. A center of excellence in public policy and ESG research. Oh. The things that we've done is we've adopted four SDG goals okay. that we are in a position to uh, facilitate fully. We've, we've, uh, we're working with the uh, nearby community. We're also on campus where every aspect of sustainability, not just climate, mm. not just this, but in terms of everything that we do on a daily mm. basis is linked to sustainability in one way or the other. Okay, before I let you go, yeah. you have to tell me what has been your favorite part of this fest. It has to be the thought provoking conversations from some of the experts from across the globe. We have had academics globally and also from India. We've got artists, we've got practitioners and sheer enthusiasts. Collectively, the kind of discussions that we've had were truly, truly thought provoking. Mm -hmm. How human cognition is going to change. Think about it. I never really thought that could, you know, AI could have that kind of an impact. But apart from that, I think my favorite part were all these installations <laughs> where one of the things that I'd want you to visit yeah. is this large LED screen which uh, plays music and displays a sort of pattern depending on your mood. Hmm. Are you ready for that? Absolutely. Let's go check it out. Shalom. <laughs> AI and Society, an Alliance University Confest. Media partner, CNBC TV 18.